I think it's been quite a bit of time since I've actually wanted to talk about the Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul Reanime. I think a lot of people understand how I feel regarding its anime and kind of how poorly Studio Periot handled the entirety of those seasons. So I'm going to kind of go in order and I guess give my full opinion for Season 1, Root A, TGRE Season 1 and TGRE Season 2 and then kind of wrap that into what could specifically be a reboot. It's something that I think a lot of people want. Will we ever get that? I don't necessarily think so, but there's always that high expectation. There's always that will and want for, you know, a series that you may be a really big fan of to ultimately get that fantastic anime adaptation that it deserves. Firstly, I don't want this to kind of be a slander session for Studio Periot. I guess there is a lot more things that they've done wrong that they've done right. And it's without a doubt that the first season, one of the best, if not the best, out of all the seasons. However, season one still has its flaws, like the various amount of flaws that the other seasons have. Uh, the biggest problem with me in terms of season one is the amount that they ultimately covered, which this would also be a recurring theme throughout the others, but I guess also the tone of the story. The atmosphere that the anime portrays. Obviously the differences between manga and anime uh, atmospheres are very hard to kind of mimic. When you are creating an anime adaptation for a manga, trying to bring over that manga atmosphere is extremely difficult. There's a lot of things that obviously comes into consideration with an anime uh, regarding its music and its audio cues and just the world in general and how this all kind of correlates with the animation and the coloring, the whole aesthetic that the anime goes for. I guess you yourself as a viewer have probably noticed the different kind of iterations of art styles that has gone from season one of Tokyo Ghoul to Tokyo Ghoul Re season two, right? The animation, the art style, the whole color and texture, the whole atmosphere and feel has changed completely. However, it's not natural like Tokyo Ghoul's story. You know, the traversal from TG to TG Re is a completely different atmosphere and a completely different concept. That's natural. However, the anime variation is very artificial and more so changed to make it more appropriate or even easier to portray some sort of emotion or some sort of atmosphere. Season 1 kind of has this overly horrified, overly vampiric vibe to it. I feel like they definitely took a lot of inspiration from a lot of vampire horror series or animes and kind of just implemented that into the ghoul format which is very much far from the truth. At some points, yes, they do a good job in kind of capturing Carnegie and his portrayal. I think that's probably the brightest point from season one uh, but they do a very weird job in portraying ghouls and they make them overly horrified for the completely wrong reason. Now necessarily I wouldn't have a problem with that if they gradually brought it down to a equal footing and that's kind of the whole traversal of the story is that ghouls are viewed this type of way and then us as readers or watchers change our perception over time to come to learn that a lot of ghouls are actually good people they're not these merciless killing machines that they're portrayed to be at the beginning of the story. They don't do that. The traversal is very jagged and jarring, and it goes from this high escalation of Rize being this absolutely bloodthirsty monster ghoul that kills people and eats people to characters that want to help Karnaki. There's no real intermedium in between there, and it's very difficult to kind of feel some type of way towards ghouls when you kind of get that mouthful right at the beginning. Season 1, however, covers quite a bit, and I do cut them quite a bit of slack because it's kind of their first time time, I believe, for Studio Peria to produce a series like Tokyo Ghoul that was as popular as Tokyo Ghoul, which featured very, very dark elements and very mature concepts and themes that were very difficult to portray. I mean, even the Kagane designs themselves were very overly, sh I guess, shonen-esque, if you will. It's probably not the right word to use, but they were very, uh, I guess, colorful and vibrant, which obviously takes away from the story completely, gives this different vibe and tone to it. Uh, obviously, that's not how the Kagane is meant to look. It looks like we're kind of watching this big clash of neon abilities that literally has nothing to do with this subpar realistic portrayal of a story and a Kagane that is more blood and bone and not really mystical comes out of the humanoid ghoul's back. It's not like this neon weapon that appears out of nowhere. But moving on to Route A, I know there's a lot of, I guess, disingenuous feelings towards the series just because it doesn't follow uh, from season one. I don't want to continue that narrative of like, oh, Route A is really bad because in hindsight, it's actually not. The storytelling is, you know, pretty generalized. The art direction is pretty generalized. And for the most part, Route A as a series, as a 
you know, season two, I guess, for Tokyo Ghoul is really bad. However, if you take out the Tokyo Ghoul aspect and how it's kind of moving away from the source material and completely ruins the, I guess, cohesive ties that goes from Tokyo Ghoul to season two to season three to season four, then the series itself isn't all too bad. It holds a lot of meaning, it holds a lot of weight and a lot of emotion, actually. Uh, I think a lot of people would argue that season one and season two are the best, uh, even though Route A is obviously completely different. Regardless of that, it still holds a pretty well-rounded structure. And I think if Route A was its own story, or at least like this was an anime only, I think season one and season two would be a, a pretty good thing. They would work well with one another and the cohesive ties between them would be really good. I, I guess the biggest problem comes when you try and add Tokyo Ghoul Re season one right after Route A and it completely breaks that. I mean, it doesn't do anything for it. Ultimately it leads me to Tokyo Ghoul Re season one and season two. For the most part, I didn't really know what to expect from this series. I was hoping for the best. I was hoping that Studio Perriot would kind of see everyone's wants and concerns and try their best to deliver a very well-rounded structure, a well-rounded story, a well-rounded anime. However, that wasn't really the case. And we got two seasons that basically covered the entirety of the story. That's about 170 chapters in two seasons or in 24 episodes, I believe. This is something that I don't think any anime should do or recommend any studio or any person of high caliber that has that control to even recommend or consider uh, doing an anime season of 12 episodes or 24 episodes to cover that much material. I thought they would have learned their lesson from season one and how they covered a lot of the source material but even the reaction and the comments about the first season were for the most part pretty good but there was also the worries and wants there. We wanted more, we wanted this, we wanted that and we obviously can't always get what we want but that was kind of the biggest concern is the pacing issue. Tokyo Ghoul as a manga and Tokyo Ghoul Re as a manga is very depthly. There is a lot of themes, a lot of concepts, a lot of storytelling and a lot of very important things that really need to be shown and as soon as you start to kind of take out bits and pieces of the story the whole entire narrative starts to crumble and I think that's how important portraying the manga is especially in an anime format. I know it's a lot more difficult, but that makes it more so important. And don't get me wrong, I think it's definitely a skill that a lot of these really talented animators and directors can do this really well. They take a lot of source material and turn it into beautiful anime adaptations, I have no doubt for that. But for Tokyo Ghoul, it was definitely a challenge for them. They even went above and beyond and wanted to change directors for Tokyo Ghoul Re, kind of create the Kagane to be a little bit more realistic and they kind of ended up being pretty subpar and bland but then they kind of backtracked and even Carnegie's Kagane at the end was very colorful having all those colors kind of in place and just doesn't really work with the overtone of the story and how dark it truly is however kind of looking past the colors and everything like that the storytelling was just completely thrown out the window the characterization the portrayal of character emotion certain characters in general uh, were completely cut out and gone where does this leave us you know we have the entirety of the series kind of animated for us and I guess in some way shape or form it's not really much to begin with so do we start again do we ask for a reboot do we sign a petition do we do this do we do that is that even possible at this point is there even a studio or a director or someone that is willing to kind of take control that is a big enough fan of the Tokyo Ghoul franchise to give it an anime adaptation that it deserves I think the biggest issue that I guess any director or any studio or company that would have when they're facing the idea of animating Tokyo Ghoul is that of money and time. I think those are obviously the biggest thing in terms of most businesses. Tokyo Ghoul has a lot of attention to detail which equates to a lot of time given. Uh, obviously you don't want a one by one portrayal, right? You don't want one anime episode to cover one whole chapter because the entire series would be extremely long and that would use up a lot of money and I can guarantee that that wouldn't really be a good adaptation to begin with. That'd be very slow and drawn out and extremely long-winded so I guess the beauty of it is finding people that are more passionate to bring Tokyo Ghoul to life to put in the time and effort to reboot it you know give it the uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood treatment that it deserves. Now obviously two completely different series with two completely different tones and concepts and I guess lengths which is the most important thing but I do well and truly believe that there is people out there that want this to happen and when I say people out there I mean like directors and company 
companies that want to see Tokyo Ghoul thrive in an anime format because Studio Pariot, without a doubt, didn't do justice. Uh, I think they could have done a lot better with maybe a lot more time or even a lot more money or even if they cared to the amount that they say they truly did but supposedly the directors that worked on majority of the seasons never even touched Tokyo Ghoul, never even read it, which I guess kind of goes back to the passion idea, to find people passionate for it. I know that director that's done Castlevania on Netflix is also looking at doing Berserk for Netflix, which I think is an absolutely phenomenal thing. He's also doing, I think, Devil May Cry. That is a, a very beautiful thing. The Berserk has pretty much the exact same treatment, not a really good, at least as of recent, anime adaptation. So Tokyo Ghoul and Berserk and a lot of other seinen series are well and truly in the same box. It definitely does bring up some very interesting questions, like why is it usually only seinen series that get the short end of the stick? And when I say the short end of the stick, I usually mean the shortest end of the stick. Don't get me wrong, there's well and truly bad shonen or even romance or anything anime adaptations, but I think the worst animes that even exist at this point in time, and I guess it's kind of all opinion based, but some of the worst ones are, are definitely seinen. And I think it's this common theme that seinen series aren't going to sell as much, or they can't market it as much, or they can't do this or that because it's not as easy, or the demographic is too old, or they don't have a large enough demographic that is more engaged with the community or their sales point or anything like that. So they kind of want to avoid it completely. So at the end of the day, it even surprises me that Studio Period even wanted to do Tokyo Ghoul to begin with. Was the name just too big that they couldn't refuse and that they had to create this very seemingly half-assed anime? Which makes me even more confused after that because season one, they seemed like they paid a lot of attention to Carnegie and to the story for the most part. But after that, it went all downhill. Maybe they didn't get the response that they wanted or the money that they wanted. I don't know, but they decided to go a completely different direction, which was not the smartest idea. Regardless, even after all this, and it's a very long-winded video, so I do apologize, even after the entirety uh, of, you know, the Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul reanime and how I feel about it, I would really love to see a reboot. I think anyone would. Any fan of the anime that didn't necessarily enjoy it or think it deserves more justice would agree. I'd even just be satisfied with Tokyo Ghoul being reanimated from start to finish because we never got the final half of Tokyo Ghoul. Tokyo Ghoul Re could come later on down the line but if I had an option, I think just a reboot for Tokyo Ghoul would be really, really nice. You know, maybe one day we may get that. I wouldn't have my fingers crossed or, you know, waiting for an announcement anytime soon, but it's definitely something there. And I think with a large enough team necessarily had this perfect idea and world and where money wasn't really a problem or time wasn't really an issue and we're very passionate about Tokyo Ghoul could create a very beautiful anime adaptation. I guess we can only sit here and wait and pray that one day that might be true. Or maybe one day a very beneficial human being will come along and give us the berserk treatment in terms of trying to get it onto Netflix or someone that's very passionate about bringing series that have gotten shafted back to life. With that being said, that is basically it. Let me know how you guys feel about the Tokyo Ghoul anime franchise. Season 1, Route A, Tokyo Ghoul Re Season 1, and Tokyo Ghoul Re Season 2. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Would you love to see a reboot? Would you love to see Brotherhood? Let me know. With that being said, I'm actually going to end the video off here. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.